Hey there guys, dating coach Harry Wilmington, and today I want to talk to you about text flow patterns, specifically what the streaming of texting should look like when you first start dating a woman versus what it typically looks like. Now, I have a lot of guys that write to me and say, Harry, I've been trying to text this woman and for whatever reason, it started off great and now she's suddenly falling off and I don't know how to combat that. And so what I wanna do is tell you exactly why that happens by way of the wrong way that texting typically happens and then we're gonna go into methods that I use that result in women constantly hitting me up without me having to hardly ever reach out to them. As always, this show is brought to you by Get Girls Academy, my exclusive program designed to help you attract, date, and keep the women you want. As a member, you'll gain access to proven strategies, insider tips, and bi-monthly group coaching sessions where we tackle your biggest questions live. Click the link in the description to learn more and join today. So. I'm guessing that you've experienced the following texting flow that I'm about to share with you guys. So picture this, you meet a woman, whether it's online or in person, either way, you guys connect and you get her contact information. You start texting her and you are texting a lot. You're sending her questions, she's sending you back questions, you guys are both sending emojis and memes and LOLs and it's all great and it's like a non-stop text-a-thon in the beginning, right? So finally, let's say after like three or four days of marathon texting, you get her on a date and you see her in person and you have a great date, you go home, you send that I had a great date text, and then the next day you send the good morning text. Throughout the next day, you're just sending her random comments and memes and stuff, and the texting is still pretty hot and heavy. Like she's still texting a lot, and you're still texting a lot, and there's just a lot of messages being sent back and forth. And then at some point, you might even get her on a second date, and you go on that second date, have a great time, maybe get a kiss, maybe get a hookup. Either way, it's feeling amazing. And then she goes home, you send her a, hey, I had a great time with you tonight text, and she sends you back a text that's like, oh, I had a great time too, thanks again. But this time you notice the text is just a, just a little bit shorter than it has been in the past, which you, you've only seen her like one other time, but like you've been texting a lot to this lady, right? So you could tell that her texting is just a little less wordy this time, and you start to think, okay, well that's, I guess not a big deal, right? And then the next morning comes, you send her that good morning text, and maybe this time, she doesn't get back to you right away. Like maybe it takes like an hour or two to get back to you and for a little bit you're panicking and then she responds back and then you're like, whew, thank God. And you start texting her some more, right? Only this time you're noticing throughout the day that as you're texting her, she's not as quick to respond to you as she was before. And then the next day comes, you try to hit her up some more times and this time the responses back are even more delayed and you also notice that the responses are shorter they don't seem to have as much emotion or as much joy in them as they did before, but at least she's still responding, right? And then inevitably, you ask her for that third date. And it may take her like 12 hours or 24 hours to get back to you, but she gets back to you. And let's say maybe she agrees to a date or maybe she says she's busy. Either way, the response to getting a date is not as enthusiastic as it was in the past. So now you're thinking back on, I've been texting her, she's texting back less, she's saying less, and she doesn't sound enthused, I'm starting to lose this chick. But you get on the third date, things seem pretty normal, and then she goes home, you send her a good night text, and this time, she doesn't respond. So now you're panicking, what's going on? You wait till the next day, maybe you double text and send a good morning text, how are you, is everything okay, whatever, and this time, she takes like almost a day or two days to get back to you. And at this point, either she responds back and says something like, hey, uh, thanks for responding. I had a great time on the last date, but I just don't, insert excuse, I'm, I'm busy, I, I'm not ready to date again, blah, 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 blah. Or she just ghosts you all together and doesn't respond. And so you're sitting there thinking, what the freak happened? Like, how did I go from we were texting all the time to now she's darn near ghosting me or not responding back right away and she sounds like she wants to do it less, like what's going on? And what happened is this, is that you fell for the trap. You fell for the idea that in order to keep a woman's interest, you need to text her all the time and be in front of her face. Now I go over a lot of this extensively in my free ebook, Texting Women Like a Boss, which you can get at my website. But suffice to say, part of the reason that guys fail so bad at this is because you do not know what the flow of texting should actually look like in order to keep a woman engaged in texting conversation. Most guys assume that 
You need to be texting all the time. But what typically happens over time, just naturally of getting to know you, like even a woman that is highly interested and actually wants to keep saying yes to dates, you could also find that she also starts to respond less and respond with shorter texts when she does get back to you about those dates, right? And so here's the thing is that in the beginning, when a woman's trying to get to know you and she's trying to get in your good graces, she's willing and open to having a lot of texting, right? But as you start to get to know her more and you're continuing to text a lot, one of two things is gonna happen. Either she's going to get annoyed by all the text you're sending, at which point she's going to lose interest, or she's already knowing that she's gonna see you in person and most women like the idea of getting to know you more in person because that's more of an authentic exchange. Like when you're telling jokes or when she's next to you and she can touch you and feel you and smell you, those are tangible things that allow her to really get to feel in the moment that she's starting to build feelings for you. Whereas over text, it's just digital. I know we think we can add LOLs and emojis and make it feel like an emotional thing, but really, really, the best way for her to get an emotional connection to you is gonna be in person. And so sometimes, as a woman's getting to know you, she'll think, okay, I'm getting to know him, I'm getting to see him, okay, great. Now, I can kinda lay off the texting a bit because he, he she's thinking he knows that I, I'm getting to like him, right? Like he knows that I'm saying yes to dates and when I'm in person, I'm doing all the things, I'm hugging him, I'm touching him, I'm complimenting him, I'm making him dinner, I'm, I'm uh, suggesting dates and whatnot. Like he knows from those actions in person that I like him, right? Like I don't need to keep on doing all this texting to try to show that I like him when I'm doing that in person now that we're going on regular in-person dates. And so women start to get frustrated because you as a guy, are trying to continue to text them because let's, let's be real guys, we are, if nothing, once we find a pattern that we like, we are consistent in that. So if we were texting a lot in the beginning and getting good results, we think if we keep on texting a lot that that's gonna show her that we like her, but more importantly, that she's also going to like that. And a lot of times women are just texting a lot in the beginning because they don't wanna ruffle feathers and they haven't gotten to know you yet. But once they get to know you, they're thinking, I can now back off, like, I don't need to give this guy 24 hours of my time. It's okay if we go a day or two. He's gonna know I still like him when I say yes to the date. And then guys get butt hurt. And then they don't know why the girl's like, try to figure out what's going on. And she starts to lose interest, all right? So, I stress this because again, as I've said time and time again, texting kills attraction. Texting should be used as a utilitarian tool in order to get dates. Again, go get the free ebook. It is free, put your name and email in there and you will get it sent to you today. All the 21 texting commandments that I talk about that are gonna give you a leg up in the texting game, right? So with all that said, okay. So now you know what a negative texting flow pattern looks like, where you're texting all the time, and then it goes from a lot of texting to like it starts to slow down to a trickle, right? Now, I try to stress to you guys that you do not wanna use her texting consistency as a method of reading how interested she is. Most women don't actually like to text their guy a whole lot, and they're all, they're, but they're willing to get his text in and say yes to dates because they wanna do in-person stuff, not nonstop chatty Kathy stuff on the phone. So. What then is the right texting flow pattern that's gonna get you better results? Here's what I've discovered based on my years of dating, right? For one, I have never been a heavy texter and the times that I tried it in the beginning with girls that I liked, it, it, it just flopped so hard that I just stopped doing it. So, what has worked for me better? Here's what I found, right? Is that for one, let's say you meet a woman either in person or on a dating app. Well, if you meet them on the dating app, you're gonna have to chit chat with them a little bit in order to get them interested enough to wanna go out on a date, okay? But with that said, at the point that you get this girl on a date, again, whether you met her on a dating app or you met her in person somewhere, you use the phone to do a little bit of banner enough to get her to agree to a date. At the point that you get the date, your first assumption should be that she no longer needs to hear from you as consistently on the phone, all right? So when you go on that first date, you're gonna show her the best possible time that you can, and then at the end of the night, this is where it starts, where you do not send a I had a fun time text. Now, some people are gonna hear that, some women are gonna watch that too, because some women watch my videos, they're gonna hear that and think, oh, that's not right, if I don't hear from a guy after a date, I would never date him. Okay, you can say that. In my experience, as an actual dater who's dated actual women, and I've actually done this where I've not sent stuff, every single time I would take a girl on a great date, and I would get home, and I would not text her, inevitably, 
she would text me. Hey, Harry, just want you to know, thanks again so much for the great time. I really had fun getting to know you. So, what does this new pattern look like? This new pattern looks like, for one, you don't text all the time. You're only using the phone to get dates. So when you get home, expect that if she had a good enough time, she's gonna hit you up sometime between that night or the next morning, at which point you simply respond, hey, great, I had a fun time too. What I'm not doing is I'm not trying to set up second dates on the phone and I'm not trying to be a chatty Cathy on the phone, right? So suffice to say though, I have found this, okay? So I let that happen and then I wait a few days. I, I wait like a minimum of usually like four days before I initiate a text to them to ask them out again. And I found by doing that, the results have been that women that had a good time on a date and are sitting at home thinking about me and are calling up her sister and her cousin and her mom to talk about me and are building up really good vibes thinking back on the date that we just had are more apt to reach out to me within those four days and I find that works a lot better because if they're chasing you, they can't be replacing you. Now some might say, this is a manipulation. Yes it is. The manipulation is you show a girl a really good time on a first date and she might wanna reach out to you. Oh my God, that's so like, toxic and mas masculinity going on, like no. Like the reality is that when you're showing women a good time and you're helping them build interest, they of their own accord are gonna be apt to reach out to you. Now, that's not all the time because some women, some women are traditional and are gonna wait for the guy to reach out. And if you're dating a traditional woman, that's also fine. You just need to know that you reaching out every single day is not the way that this goes. What your program should be is you take her out, have a good time, and then you wait a few days, you text her and say, hey, so-and-so, would love to take you out on another date, let me know if you're free on this day or this day, and we'll go out. And then you do that, you take her out, have a good time, and then you repeat the pattern. And inevitably what'll happen is, because you're not texting her as much, as she starts to build interest, and she starts to wanna see you more, the majority of women we'll start reaching out with like emojis or memes, or I used to get women that would just send the hi, like a little hi text in the middle of the week for no reason, which is actually, uh, it's it actually telling you passively, hey, I hope you're thinking about me. I wanna see you and talk to you, what's going on? And when they reach out, all you do is say, hey, great hearing from you. You know what, I was just thinking about you. I was thinking about taking you someplace this week. Let me know if you're free. Anytime they reach out, that is a signal that she wants to see you again and then you simply just plan another date. So I found that when you do it that way, you're gonna find women never get tired of you texting them because you're not texting them a lot, which means now they gotta be the ones to up the texting game if in fact they want a lot of texting exchanges. Now, once you get into a relationship with the woman, this changes the bit where you can reach out a, l a little bit more. Like my typical stance is for every three times she reaches out, I reach out one time because again, if you start doing the most, to them it's gonna feel overwhelming and we want her thinking that it is her idea to keep coming to you. So again, in terms of the flow of texting, it should be you're doing minimal texting and as you keep it minimal, then she'll start reaching out to you more. And the way that you can actually tell that you're doing this right is at some point down the line, say like date three or four or five, right? She's gonna come to you and say, hey, so I just noticed that you don't really like text a whole lot and I just wanted to know like, what's up with that? And what she's actually thinking in her head that she's not saying to you is, oh my God, I don't know if you like me or not because you're not texting me like all these other bozos do that I'm not dating but that I know like me because they text me all the time and I really like you and I don't know your like. And that's where you want her to be. You want her to be coming to you asking you to text more versus you already giving her the most in texting and then she being like, oh, um, I can't see or oh my God, like just I need, I need sp time, space and time to myself. Like if you're getting those speeches, that means you're doing it completely wrong. Women should be coming to you asking you, hey, why aren't you texting as much? And when that happens, by the way, that doesn't mean you suddenly like turn into a, ch a chatty Kathy texting either. It's just information that you should let that should let you know on a subconscious level that she really likes you and she wants more of your time. And at that point, you gotta figure out how that levels out. And I talk about that extensively in some of my other programs like the Get Girls Academy. But suffice to say, yeah, it's better for her to come to you and ask about your texting stuff than for you to be texting nonstop and then getting ghosted or getting slow responses, all right? So if you find that your flow pattern in texting up to this point has been very much the way I described it earlier, where it goes from a lot of texting to little texting, then that means that you are doing the flow all wrong. 
You need to have it where you're doing less texting, that way she can't get tired of you and she comes to you to ask for more. Because if she's chasing you, she can't be replacing you, and if she's asking for you to text, she can't be rejecting your text. So hopefully this gives you some insights into the flow pattern of how texting should work so that way you will get better results when you're messaging women that you're meeting to date. Hey there, thanks for tuning in to Harry Dating Convos. Don't forget to visit harrywilmington.com to download my free ebook, Texting Women Like a Boss. And while you're there, if you're ready to take things to the next level with your dating life, check out the Get Girls Academy membership program for exclusive strategies and live coaching. Go to harrywilmington.com to learn more and join today. Lastly, if you've got a question you'd like answered on one of these shows, leave a comment below or write me at harrywilmington at gmail.com. I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.